One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Take a moment and think about the most revolutionary events in history. Every cultural shift, film, or literature that united us as human beings. Every groundbreaking discovery that inspired us to expand our perception of the world. Every technological advancement that reimagined what was possible. Every social movement that transformed the lives of millions of people across the globe. Each of these moments began with one thing, an idea. An idea that sparked the chain reaction and spread like wildfire. An idea that became so much more than just an idea. But not just any idea. Viral ideas have a unique status because they accomplish what few ever do. Let's consider Richard Dawkins and his work in evolutionary biology. He found that pervasive ideas spread using the same model as genetics through natural selection. Natural selection, as I'm sure you're all aware, dictates that superior genes survive and multiply throughout the population, while inferior genes are bred out. And the same principle applies to ideas. Dawkins wasn't intending his discovery to be a contribution to the theory of human culture. Nevertheless, it's an effective lens to apply to the idea behind a piece of content. For every winning idea, there are thousands of losing ones. Ones that you've never encountered and probably never will because they remained in obscurity. This selection model has, in essence, resulted in a war of ideas. It's a constant, brutal battle for dominance and attention. Social media has only amplified this competition. Anyone with an internet connection can join this war of ideas. And since anyone can join this war, the winning ideas must be the creme de la creme, the very best of the very best. You're probably wondering how an idea survives and spreads with this much competition. What attributes does it need to be captivating enough to spread around the world? These are great questions to ask, but I reckon the better question is this. Can you reverse engineer virality in order to create content that rises from obscurity into prominence? And the answer is yes. And that's exactly what you're going to learn in this module. If you put the effort into understanding what makes viral content, your project will be divided into two phases, pre-virality and post-virality. For me, this understanding was a turning point in my life. Before I understood this, I was spending endless days planning, filming and editing videos and social media posts. After understanding virality, it was infinitely easier to grow my audience and launch a six-figure campaign without time and money on paid uh, marketing. Learning the art and science of virality makes creating irresistible, share-worthy content a straightforward and repeatable process. The platform itself is largely irrelevant. What matters is internalizing the specific concepts and principles responsible for viral content. The first concept I want you to understand is that if you know how to go viral, you eventually will go viral. It is a scientific and predictable process. So what precisely is virality? Let's first examine virality from a linguistic perspective. Historically, the term viral exclusively referred to infectious diseases or viruses. With the advent of social media, it's taken on a new layer of meaning. Virality is, in this context, defined as the tendency of an image, video, or piece of information to be circulated rapidly and widely from one internet user to another, i.e. viral content is viewed and shared by a ton of people in a short space of time. If you wanted to describe it in a formula, it would be attention plus shareability equals viral content. Content that for one reason or another ends up circulating around the world because it's so consumable. The next logical questions are, which ideas are more likely to grab our attention? Which types of information are we more likely to share? 
In short, anything that arouses our emotions. But which emotions are more likely to hook us and prompt us to share? That's a great question. Well, Jonah Berger, who's done a ton of empirical research in this area, investigated studies that revealed that although it appeared readers were more likely to share positive rather than negative articles, the most shared articles were in fact those which stimulated emotions that could spur their readers to take action. These high arousal articles provoked awe, excitement, amusement, anger, or anxiety. By contrast, the low arousal articles tended to leave their readers either merely content or sad. This reasoning not only explains why certain articles are widely shared, but also why certain videos go viral too. On YouTube, for example, a video of a child who just received anesthesia from a dentist aroused humor. The fact that viewers found it funny prompted them to act by sharing the video millions of times. The reason we're more likely to share high arousal articles and videos is that they excite us. In fact, as long as we're excited, almost any kind of arousal can prompt us to share. In one study, two groups of subjects were given the same article to read. The subjects of one group were instructed to run in place for a while before reading the article, while those of the other group were not. The result? The subjects from the first group who were physically excited by exercising were more likely to share the article than those subjects who didn't exercise beforehand. No matter if it's an emotional or physical arousal, becoming excited makes us more likely to share. Why does virality matter? It is important to note that we are hardwired to seek novelty. We're constantly looking for new, exciting things because it makes us feel good. But novelty soon fades. The more time we've spent on a particular piece of content, the more quickly our boredom sets in. This is precisely why I recommend that you think in series, video series, blog series, as this maximizes the number of new followers you can reach all the while keeping your loyal fans glued to your content and invested in your project's success. The more content that you put out, the greater chance you have in producing quality content as you'll learn about your audience uh, in an iterative fashion. Uh, the higher the magnitude of the emotion you elicit, the more shareable it is. When you create content that's truly exciting, entertaining and or educational, people will share it organically. So let them do the heavy lifting for you. To create a viral project, I'd recommend following the STEPS formula uh, formulated by Jonah Berger. In summary, this means making sharing information about your product a form of social currency for people, using triggers and arousing emotions to get them to share consistently and frequently, making your product uh, publicly visible and practically valuable, and finally building a compelling story around your project. In conclusion, virality isn't an overnight success. You have to invest the time and energy to understand the strategies that underpin it and strive to create better quality content with each post that you produce. This course is going to walk you through the entire process step by step and we are extremely excited to help you get started.